And hello again, everybody, and welcome to this little song and dance that we call Gwinnett Business Radio here on Business Radio X. From the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio, I am merely Mike Salmon alongside Stephen Julian. Hello, Stephen. Morning, Mike. Those were fantastic, awkward, or pregnant pauses. Yeah. Know how to keep a radio show host in suspense? Yeah. Uh, how is that, Mike? I'll tell you later. Uh, yeah, off the air. Yeah. All right, well, thank uh, you very much. I don't oh. know why that was funny, but... Wow. It wasn't funny. That's Yet why, again, ladies and gentlemen, the comedic timings of Mr. Mike Salmon. And that's why I do this and I don't go do comedy shows. Yeah, that's right, which um, is a wise decision. We, we have some wonderful guests in the studio, and then we'll explain why you have this... Uh, We're going to do that first, stuff right? Of, Should we do that first? Yeah, but let me at least... Introduce who's going to be Please on the show. Do. Please do. Uh, joining us from the show, we have the owner of Bookkeeping Express and Ray Business Advisors. John Ray is in the house from Rev Demand. Tara Lambley is here as well. She is the Chief Business Development Officer. That sounds important. It is. And Ann Hall with Own Your Idea. She is the president, not of the United States, but of Own Your Idea. I love it. So we'll talk to her later. So. Back to the stuff in front of you. What's, what's going on there? Well, a lot of times, Mike, we do our shows and we try to be timeless, but we're going to be timely. And uh, our own uh, producer, one of our producers, Z, just came back from Mardi Gras down in New Orleans, which is where he is from. And he brought back a couple of goodies. Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah. So up here somewhere. Yeah. So he brought back some goodies and we're going to ask him. I'm going to try and ask him some questions about it. Oh, so okay, go ahead. Give your mic to Z. Z, how was uh, how was Mardi Gras? Was it uh, enjoyable as usual? Yes, it was enjoyable. If you can bear the cold, it was good though. But uh, it was nice. It's it was nice. Great is it, time. Is it normally cold down in New Orleans, or is it kind of mm, when, when Mardi Gras is fairly early, like it was this year? Uh, it is cold. Uh, coming off the river, the wind blows real hard. But it normally be in March, but it, when it's kind of sunny, springtime. You've you grew up in New Orleans. How many? How many Mardi Gras celebrations have you been to? Uh, too many to count? <laughs> too many to count, but I missed a few uh, when I moved up here. So. Okay. Now, you brought back uh, you brought back two items here for us, yes. and uh, so why don't you explain both okay. of them? Well, the beads is from the Demian Parade, which runs on Saturday night. Uh, I think it's like uh, 3,500 men. It's, it's, it's a night parade with big, pretty floats that has the lights on it and everything. But it, it, it's one of the best parades uh, in New Orleans. Were you on one of the floats, or uh, were you just enjoying the floats as they go I'm by? I'm thinking about riding next year. I'm going to ride uh, the Zulu. Okay. And yep. Which is that what you which have is, is the one? coconut. Yep. Uh, that's one of their pride and joys of having throwing out coconuts to the, to the uh, people. 2016. Yes. Zulu. So they, so, so they throw these, and you better have good hands. Otherwise, gotta it's going to hit gotta, you in the head. They, so. they, they'll throw them, but sometimes they'll pass them out. Uh, most of the time, uh, it's a lot of men's on the floor. So if the lady's up in front, they get all the coconuts. <laughs> If you, if you see a couple ladies on the float, you might get a coconut if you as a male. So. Sounds like a T-shirt slogan. The ladies get all the coconuts. Yeah, so like, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> see, Mike, that's how you do a little bit of community. Not very good, but that's it. So um, the thank you. So these two organizations that that the the parade and then yes. and then the different floats. Uh -huh. um, what do they stand for? What is significance for you? Uh, well, Ademian is 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 one of the. Like I said, it's one of the best ones that done came. I think they, they celebrate, all of them celebrate like 50 years. So uh, Edemia has the most, and they own all their floats. Okay. They own everything. So it's a big party. Right. They don't party before the parade. They party after. <laughs> so they go to the Superdome, they party afterwards. Nice. Uh, Zulu is, like you say, the Zulu tribe. All right. right. Yeah, but it, it's more diverse, and it's starting to be a little more better, too. Uh, and also, they has the Rex Parade, which uh, I kind of missed it because I went to go see the Indians. Uh, and the Indians dress up in the Indian costume, and it's, it's real beautiful. It's something to see. Nice. So, uh, and, and Mardi Gras at its core is one last time a party in before we head into the season of Lent. So That's it. That's you enjoyed it. it, and glad glad you're back, and uh, thanks for bringing these. And You're welcome. And I will not throw them at the ladies on the show today. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. Yes. Are we done? No, we've got these three great guests we got to get to. We're out of time now. No, I thought you were going to have not. like a, a few seconds with Z. I didn't know you were doing a full-fledged interview. Okay. I'm sorry, Mike. Holy um, cow. Point All off right. for me. Thanks, Z. I appreciate it. Yeah, I don't know. Apparently, know what? Mike didn't. I just, you know what? It's, it's the whole Lent thing. 
not getting to eat much. I'm just a little, <laughs> you're you a little know, cranky, a little cranky. Well, right you now. know what? Before you get to the first guest, let me try and change your attitude a little bit. And I'm going to talk about love because love is what makes a Subaru. You can get big savings and enjoy the hassle-free experience. Subaru of Gwinnett, where people sell cars. Visit <laughs> Subaru of Gwinnett.com and join their family today. Come in and see the difference. Maybe you're already a Subaruist. Then follow Subaru of Gwinnett Facebook page for the latest Subaru offers, news, Don't cry. and community <laughs> events. All right, I just thought I'd give you a little background music there. <laughs> Way to fade it out there, Mike. <laughs> it's not easy to host a show it and has to do all this technical stuff. You do a here. great job with it. All right, our, our guests are going like, what have they gotten? What are we what have got we done? ourselves into now? Good here? thing we've locked the door. <laughs> Let's start with uh, John Ray with Bookie. This is a business show after it is. all. It is. Uh, John and uh, Tara, I, I do apologize, but uh, let's get down to business. John Ray, your company is Bookkeeping Express and Ray Business Advisors. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your companies. Thank you for uh, having me, first sure. of all. And, Thank you uh, for putting up with Steven and myself. No, I love the comedy, right? So, uh, um, you know, particularly when you're talking about bookkeeping, it's not always funny, right? So, uh, <laughs> so uh, we'll get to the serious part yeah, of the show now. That's, that's right. That's right. So, um, uh, my uh, 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 the business I'm in is book, obviously bookkeeping, but we specifically do outsourced accounting and bookkeeping for small businesses. So, uh, what the Typically, a client for us is somebody that maybe has been doing it themselves and is just can't stand the pain of doing it anymore, right? Their expertise is running their business, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And it's not running the back office of their business, which is what the bookkeeping and accounting part of it is. Um, we also do advisory work for our clients. So what that involves is maybe helping them acquire a loan or get some sort of financing for their business or um, uh, give them advice on, you know, strategically how to improve their business, how to improve their revenue or that kind of thing. So what got you into the business? I know like Stephen and I, Stephen's kind of the numbers guy on this show, but uh, are you one of those people that, that loves numbers or what got you kind of in this direction? Mm. Well, uh, you know, I've owned small businesses myself. And so I love helping small business owners and helping them achieve their dreams. Cause really a small business is really the sum of somebody's dream. And so that's what excites me about it. I mean, you know, the numbers are a byproduct of that, right? But those numbers lead to somebody's uh, family, you know, somebody's dreams, somebody's hopes. And that's, that's the part of it that excites me. So um, it's about finding out what that owner wants, what their long-term goals are, and then saying, let's build something toward that, right? Let's figure out how to get there. John, specifically when it comes to bookkeeping as a business owner, Let's go to that business owner that's been doing it themselves. They've mm -hmm. been open however many years. They've kind of tried to handle their own accounting and their own bookkeeping. What are some good uh, tipping points that you've seen that you would go, if, if this is the way you're thinking or this is the way you're feeling or this is what you're experiencing, you're spending this many hours per week on it, what are the tipping points that you see that you would go, you really need to start talking to me and bring me in? Well, that's a great question. So r really – uh, for a business owner, I've, I've never talked to one business owner yet that, where they make any money doing it themselves, right? So any every moment that they're spending in their back office right. is a moment that they're really working on the screws and nuts and bolts of a business and really not who's coming in the business, right? So that's, I think, the key consideration. So right the there. first tipping point is, do you want to do more business? That's right. <laughs> that that's would, right. That's a great tipping point. How can you redeploy yourself, right? So, and every owner is the best salesman for their business, typically. And so getting that owner into the sales, um, marketing, and, and client service part of their business is the best place they can be. So that's number one. Um, and number two, of course, is have you paid a penalty to the IRS? Have you paid a penalty to the state of Georgia? Have you know th th these kind of tipping points that where it's like, yep, this is not working for me anymore, right? So, um, and then I think uh, a business owner that that's doing uh, the books just for compliance purposes. In other words, that's a te the real technical way of just saying I want to get straight with the IRS. I mean, if that's the only reason you're doing it, then there's an added level to that is, and that's managing by your numbers. I mean, that's what big companies do every day, and that's how big companies get to be big companies is managing by their numbers. So what we try to get our clients to is let's get you into seeing what your, how your numbers can help translate into direction 
for your business? You know, where are you above trend and how can you keep improving that? Where are you below trend and how can you augment that deficiency? So, so more than just a necessity, that's where your advisory part comes in and let's help you kind of advise for your business. Um, quick right. follow up then. Let's talk. Let me let you talk quickly about the business owner who already has uh, a, a bookkeeping service. Mm -hmm. um, what would be and I know there are plenty of good companies out there, but you guys are going to be set apart from some of those companies. What are some of the things that you would want to tell business owners? Hey, this is what makes us different. This is what makes us maybe a better fit for you. Yeah, well, there's a lot of technological change going on in, in this industry, which is one reason why I like I got into it, okay? Because um, I like uh, the notion that uh, you can bring technology to improve a business owner's life, and that's really what's going on with in the accounting world. So, uh, there is a big move toward uh, software that can make transactions move faster through the system. So when, that means from invoice to point of sale or client information system, you know, through the bank, you know, it, uh, and into the books, right? So that happens a lot faster. There are uh, there's software that enables you to invoice faster, to collect money faster. And so all this whole uh, process is moving a lot faster than it used to be. I mean, and the old model, I call it um, nothing against Gladys, but I call it kind of the Gladys model, right? Where Gladys comes in, you know, it may be the last week of the month and opens all the mail, right? And and does all the reconciliations and ask, brings milk and cookies and, you know, everybody has a good time and she does the books. And we love Gladys, right? And so, for some people, that's a great model and they need to keep Gladys. But some people, you know, the business is moving a little faster than that now, right? And our world is moving faster than that. And the technology allows you to keep up with that. And so that's what we, that's really kind of where we differentiate ourselves. We're talking with uh, John Ray, the owner of Bookkeeping Express and Ray Business Advisors. He did not bring us any milk and cookies today. So next week we'll have Gladys, Gladys on the on show. The show. <laughs> but um, uh, John, talk about some success stories you've had. We always love stories. No, no rim shot that time. <laughs> um, I only to play the rim shot when I make funny jokes. Um, tell us a success story. We always love to hear stories. Well, uh, so I've got, uh, for example, a, a veterinary uh, practice where when I inherited this client, uh, they were in the proverbial Nike box, right? So, um, um, and that's a, I'm used to boxes. So the only question is what's label is on the side of it, right? So um, we basically in 18 months took them from uh, that box to financials, to a monthly management report that shows in graphical form what they're doing from an uh, income statement balance sheet and key performance indicator point of view so we take information out of their patient information system to show average invoices and number of patients and number of new clients which is an important uh, indicator for veterinary practices so we look at some of the key indicators that a veterinary practice needs to look at and so this vet who was is well educated in veterinary medicine not so much in business right this vet is able to keep up with his business with basically pictures as opposed to numbers and it came time for him to be able he was able and fortunate enough to have the opportunity to buy the building he was leasing well when that opportunity came he had the financials he was ready right and he had the performance because he had been keeping up with his business and managing by the numbers so it's an opportunity that uh, he had that his now his net worth is a whole lot different the stability of his practice is much better because now he's in purchase space that he owns not leased space so um and his practice is thriving so you know i love working with somebody like that where you can really see a huge difference in what they've done i've got to ask a follow-up question now and that is on the flip side i'm sure you've seen some horror stories what are some of the financial mistakes or bookkeeping mistakes that you've seen that maybe you've had to go in and correct oh my well you know i think the biggest thing is just not keeping up and keeping uh, letting things get so far behind 
that all of a sudden you've got um, the federal and state authorities all over you, right? So, you know, I'm, I've am i made too many calls to um, – a uh, examiner or an a, you know to say hey we're on the scene now can you just hang with us because we're you know the help is on the way and we're going to get this right i mean and when you're at that point uh the problem with that is you've ignored the back office so much that um you are allowing that to affect now the front part of the shop right because right. you know you can't focus on the revenue part of the business anymore uh, because you haven't taken care of the back. So, um, you know, that's the worst kind of scenario. I mean, it, it's um, – I don't necessarily fault the business owner that does it all themselves and really keeps up with it, but the worst is the business, business owner that just really kind of ignores it because it's not that important. The back office is pretty important. It's so easy to sweep it under the rug, mm-hmm. but you don't want to do that, especially in business. Yeah. It's easy to sweep it under the rug. The government won't let you keep it there. That's for no. sure. They'll find you eventually. It's the elephant uh, under the rug. It, <laughs> big, yeah. <laughs> John, uh, I want to ask you to focus just for a, a second on the business advisory side of things. Um, I, again, many other people do bookkeeping, but I don't think many others kind of talk about the business advising. Unpack that a little bit more and and kind of in the context of this question, is it more that you want to you want your business owners who work with you to ask you questions that you can either help answer or direct them where to go to get the best answers? Or or and and are there particular areas especially that you would go, make sure you ask me about acquisitions, make sure you ask me about real estate. I'll let you unpack that however you want, but just kind of in that, I'm assuming it's not in the context of we do everything. You really focused on bookkeeping, but the advisory side, you know, how much of that is resource? How much of that can you do in house? Well, uh, that's a great question. So uh, first of all, you're exactly right. No, nobody can do everything. And I'm certainly at the top of that list. I would, what I'd say to people is, um, I'm the most networked bookkeeper you will find, okay? So, uh, I, or I'm a bookkeeper with a personality, which means that if you have an issue that I can't solve, I know who I think can solve it, and I know a list of those people, and I think I may have a pretty good idea about who may be a good fit for you, right? So, um, and we can get somebody on the scene that can help this particular problem. So if you've got a, um, um, you know, somebody that needs to do, a great webinar for you. Well, I've got somebody to recommend for you. Uh, guess what? You, you may be talking to her. We're going to be talking right? to her in a couple of minutes. So I think. Uh, yeah, so th- that's the kind of that that kind of thing certainly. But um, you know, I think getting uh, business owners to think strategically about their business, right, as opposed to just um, every day they're just plodding along just like you know the plow horse that starts down the row and just keeps going right you want to get them out of the weeds get them above it right exactly exactly and think about their numbers in terms of something that's strategic so uh hey this is what this particular key performance indicator is showing so how can i what can i do to improve that i mean it may reveal a marketing problem it may reveal a personnel problem right so Let's talk about what that problem may be and figure out what the solution is. And if I can't help you with it, I'll find somebody that can. One of the things you mentioned, John, is uh, that you're very connected. You network a lot and so forth. Talk about your involvement in the community because I know you are well known uh, in the business community. Well, I'm uh, uh, so I'm very active in uh, in my community in terms of a couple of different things. Uh, You know, one of the reasons I started this business was because I'm. I have a uh, uh, charitable activity called Backpacks of Love, and we uh, it's about five years old now, and basically it's for, we work through the school system, to and they identify kids that don't have enough food for over the weekend. You know, they get school lunches and breakfast during the week. They don't have enough food for over the weekend. So um, being able to have a business that enable, that allows me to do that was very important to me. So... Um, you know, we work through about 18, 19 different schools in um, North Fulton and Forsyth counties, and uh, they they identify those kids, and we assemble sponsors to fill backpacks, and that's uh, that's something I'm very active in. And then the 
I'm also uh, active on the board of the Alpharetta Business Association. I'm, I'm uh, uh, do a lot of work with them and uh, Greater North Fulton Chamber, and uh, so I, that, that keeps me pretty busy. So. Well, we appreciate that very much. And uh, before we let you go, why don't you give us a website, any contact information you'd like to share with the, the business leaders and business owners that are listening right now? Sure. So uh, my email is jray at raybusinessadvisors.com. Um, you can also reach me at 404-287-2627. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, uh, John Ray one um, Also have a Facebook and a, and a uh, Twitter uh, feed th- uh, that I'm pretty active on as well. I think I read once, Stephen, where bookkeeper is like the one word in the English language that has double letters three times in a row. You got it. It's a good Jeopardy Little question. Tr- the, yeah, there you wow. go. A little nugget that... Interesting factoid for us there. I like that. Exactly. I learned something today, Mike. Thanks to you. That's why people tune into this great show, because it's not for the comedy, I can tell you that. No, that is that is. It's for for nuggets like that and great business people like the ones we have in the room. Speaking of great nuggets. Wait a minute. Let let Uh, me me officially just say thank you, John. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, go ahead, Stephen. Speaking of great nuggets, Mike, SpeedPro Imaging in Marietta helps businesses stand out by providing high-quality large graphics. Don't you dare play more music. If you can imagine it, they can make it as the industry leader for large-scale uh, printing they deliver impactful images that share a message attract attention and reinforce your brand to find out more visit speed pro mary doing it on the dance floor drop it hit it dump it okay dot maybe not. com <laughs> that's speed pro marietta dot com should we edit that out or uh, i didn't realize it was gonna be like that and they'll and and we should contact john and he'll get us a good dj because he probably has networked with one, because you are not one, Mike. I'm playing the wrong music here. Wow. That wasn't good. Okay, we'll fix that. You know, John helped us get right back on track. We were good and professional. A little bit of humor tinged, and then you've... you've okay. No, I don't, I don't let us go down that highway that day. I am so glad that our next guest is going to help us get back on track and really help us with our revenue and, and doing webinars and other things like that. So, Mike... Who is our next away. guest? Would you like me to introduce her? Is it Tara? It is Tara Lomboli of Rev Demand. She is the Chief Business Development Officer there. Isn't that great? Very cool. Tara, welcome to uh, the circus. We appreciate you joining us on the show here. Thank you so much. Uh, tell us all about Rev Demand and, and what you do. Thanks. Well, Rev Demand, I founded in 2011, and my passion is to help small business owners that maybe aren't great at marketing themselves no there's not there's no people out there (laughs) like that never (laughs) she says it so gently maybe (laughs) not great well you you, but i mean that you see that all the i mean whether it be you know doctors they 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 know how to be doctors not business owners Mm -hmm. you know john mentioned veterinarians they know how to be vets not business owners so i mean i'm sure you have more than enough people that you can help exactly yes there's no shortage (laughs) When you say that uh, they maybe not are the best at marketing, what are some of those symptoms? What are some of the things you see that you go, mm, you really need to talk to me? Oh, right, exactly. Uh, one of the big ones is just not having any consistent way to get prospects into the, you know, we call the sales funnel, right? The top. That's what I focus on is top line revenue. I don't, I let my friend John worry about the bottom line. There you go. <laughs> we just work on the top line. And if they don't have a consistent way to get prospects in, I, well, the typical scenario is the business owner, B2B services, that's who I typically deal with. They are um, getting their business by word of mouth referrals. And you can only get so far along. And so that's what I, where I typically come in is where that business owner has reached a point where they've kind of hit a ceiling and they don't know when those referrals are coming, how often they're going to come. They can't really, you know, And maybe their, maybe their strategy is, well, I tried this and then I tried this yeah. and then I tried that. Uh-huh. Yeah. I sent, a, I sent a letter out to like 300 people and it didn't do anything. And <laughs> I just really, <laughs> one letter and you didn't get any response. Huh? Man, yeah, direct mail does not work. Don't right. even direct do that. Direct mail does Don't not go work there. because I sent one letter out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that that's a big one. Um, another one, honest to God, I, I met with a business where they, the sale, the owner was a salesperson. He would go out, he'd have a great meeting with a prospect, come back to the office and would kind of just forget about actually delivering the proposal that he'd promised that prospect. 
Ooh. <laughs> That's so the, a great marketing plan. Yeah, the conversion rate wasn't so good <laughs> just because he never actually put wow. the proposal out there. <laughs> do, do you consider yourself a marketing agency? To me, just like you should be called a common sense agency. <laughs> but uh, are, are you? Is, how do you, you kind of uh, market yourself? Uh, yeah, great question. Um, actually, you, you send out one letter and <laughs> to 300 people, and 100 right. of them responded. No, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, amazing. <laughs> exactly. But no, I actually don't use the word marketing too often to describe describe us because uh, I don't come from a traditional uh, or corporate marketing background, really. I um, come from a uh, sales background and a small business marketing, which is like guerrilla marketing, basically, background. And so I don't do the traditional, you know, marketing in the sense of people think maybe a logo or a web design or something like that. Really, what we're looking at is what's going to get you prospects in the sales funnel. I always say that. It, so it's going to be things like, you know, we're going to look at targeted email campaigns. We're going to look at some webinars, you know, some other things that are going to drive prospects and leads. In. Walk, walk Mike and I through the process. We, we sit down with you as small business owners mm -hmm. and we say, yeah, we sent out the letter. We've tried this. We've tried that. Um, it, so it, it talk slowly because I'm taking <laughs> notes. <laughs> We, we don't have enough time for that. The first consultation is always free. Right. <laughs> but walk us through the process. What is, you know, how do you take a small business owner from step one to success? Yeah, great. I like that question. So we start with what are your goals? I always ask, you know, what are your sales goals? And I think we don't, often enough, we don't think about the marketing related to sales. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. Um, so we have to start with what are your sales goals? You know, if you're planning on doubling your business this year, we have to walk that back and say, well, okay, how's your conversion rate from your proposal? If you do actually deliver the proposal <laughs> to <laughs> sales, and then you have to walk that all the way back to, well, how many leads do we need to put in there? Okay. Well, what have you tried so far? And what's been your experience? I do ask those questions because maybe they have found that their particular target market is not responsive to, you know, a particular type of marketing. Let's say social media. You know, they're targeting bankers. So maybe social media is not the best venue for them to generate prospects. So, you know, there's we look at strategies, too, of how are we going to reach them. We talk about target market. Actually, a lot of small businesses don't really take the time to understand exactly who is buying from them and why they're buying from them. So we try to unpack that, too, and understand who. I, I think some of the other of your worthy competitors in your industry, they're probably only focused on the process or a product. Mm -hmm. You're really kind of all consultative. And, and I, I like mm -hmm. how you said... Um, you're putting prospects in the sales fund. I mean, you're you're like, look, if you're going to work with me, the end result is revenue. That's exactly. why it's called rev demand. You got it. And and it, how unique is that? Uh, let me just ask it that way. Is that fairly unique? In, I, I think so. Yeah. Um, I, it's hard to do your own competitive research. Well, you know your target market yeah. now. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> but from what I have found, I think it is fairly unique because we do take a sales and marketing sort of look at things and a business development standpoint rather than just a lot of um, business owners a lot of times they want to jump right into the tactics you know they'll say well I need to get a brochure together and I need to send out a newsletter and I'm like whoa whoa, whoa back it up back it up right. you know why what's your goal and do you know that you know you why do you need a brochure you know do you really need one or does do you need one online or do you need to print you know so a lot of times it's you, you got to back off and look at the whole sales strategy and then figure out, okay. Return on time, return on equity, return mm -hmm. on what they're investing with you. Yes. We got somebody to help with the top line and someone to help with the bottom line. I like this. All and, in one show. Exactly. And, and wait till we get to the idea side. That'll oh, yeah. be That'll be just, <laughs> that'll be the icing on the cake. We're Absolutely. talking with uh, Tara Lam uh, Lamboli with uh, uh, Rev Demand here on Gwinnett Business Radio. Uh, John gave us a story, a success story. I'd love to ask you about a success story, maybe a company that wasn't doing it right, had no idea what they were doing, and you came in and you actually showed uh, a, an increase in sales because of the work you did with them. Yeah, thanks. Is that a good question? That is a good question. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'll you be can... here all week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, a lot of times the companies we work with, the, the owner is the salesperson, but sometimes they, all, they have salespeople on staff as well. Um, they just don't really maybe have a marketing person necessarily. And and 
I will say some business owners try to make their salesperson also their marketing person. Please, this is a PSA. Please don't do that. And you mentioned, you mentioned <laughs> Tara, so, some of these companies don't have marketing people. A lot of times when business isn't going quite well, that's the first person they'll cut or mm-hmm. they'll cut out their marketing. Yep, exactly. Let me ask you to unpack why they shouldn't make the salesperson the marketing okay. person. Talk, talk a, there's passion there, so tell me why. <laughs> And, and, and then get to the success story. Sorry, yes, yes, yes I will. We definitely will get to the success story. <laughs> I have been in that role. This is probably why I have that that passion that you hear. But um, I was a marketing person. I started out my very first job for an IT services company. And then I became a salesperson because I was like, I can talk about this. I can, you know, I like interacting with customers and I get what we do and what the value is and all that. So I started doing that. But then, uh, so I had a quota and I had, you know, I had numbers I had to meet. But then I was also supposed to get out a newsletter and build up the website. And I really didn't get paid anymore for that part of it. <laughs> it was just sort of expected. And I'm like, well, gee, am I going to go out and, and do the work that I'm going to get some commissions on? Or am I going to sit here and work on this newsletter? Mm, I'm going to go sell. <laughs> right. So th- they're not compensated similarly. They're not motivated similarly, usually. Um, a salesperson makes a terrible marketer. And sometimes vice versa as well. So, yeah, I wouldn't. Mm, Good. I Good just, explanation. just wouldn't go there. <laughs> All right. So, so some saw a company who needed some marketing help. Yes. So, they had a um, sales they had a sales team here in Atlanta. And they were having their sales team. They had a database of thousands of, of prospects. And they were having their sales team take their time to call through these really cold prospects that hadn't been touched in a long time. And it was just a waste of time. These guys were in the business years and years, lots of experience, really understood the benefits and, and could move along you know, these deals. But they were spending time making cold calls and not qualified cold calls. And so they said, the owner said, well, there has to be a better way to be doing this. I said, there absolutely is. <laughs> Please don't do that to them. They will they'll die having to do that. So... What we did is came in and we did the, what we call marketing qualification. You know, we just started actually communicating with that database they had, which hadn't happened in years, believe it or not, besides calling. So we started sending pieces out to them and just, you know, nurturing, just drip, 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 drip. And then, oh, now we have people who opened the emails and clicked on them and requested a demo or an appointment. You know, imagine that. Now, now you get your salesperson involved and get them to close it you know so along with the success story talk a little bit about what are the what are the best either size or industries what are the companies that really should be talking to you is there a sweet spot that rev demand can really help absolutely we, we tend to work with you know smaller companies that don't have a marketing person on staff already so you know our largest client i think is about 40 employees but um we have also worked in the past though with companies that do maybe have a marketing person on staff but they're overwhelmed and they really can't do everything well they usually have a kind of a specialty they're good at pr they're good at trade shows or they're you know good at are direct they, mail or something like that are they named gladys they may even be named gladys is that billy <laughs> <laughs> Mark the marketer. Uh, yeah, there you go. I don't know. Yeah, Mark really likes trade shows, doesn't really so much like building out email campaigns and looking right. at the workflow and, whoa, if the prospect likes this, then we're going to put them on that track. You know, th- that's the, really their, their sweet spot. And what you and what you bring, what Rev Demand brings, because I know you're kind of known for the webinar, Yeah. but it, it can really be almost anything in marketing. It's really a marketing, stra- overall marketing strategy. Mm-hmm. Correct? Yep. And the tactics we use are email campaigns, webinars, like you mentioned, some direct mail, and then other stuff, as my friend John said, you find other resources that are Because you're really a great networker yourself. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, Tara, I, w- I wish we had more time. We'll have to have you come back, because I mean, I mean, I, I could tell you're full of stories and uh, got some great information, and I think we've just, you know, skimmed the surface with, with everything we've talked about. How'd you do with your notes? Did you get some of them, half of them? Questions? I think I might, there's like 10 of them here, and I got maybe two, two in. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we could talk all day, so maybe we'll have you back. Thank you so Although much. Although, after she wa- walks out the door, she may never want to come she back into the studio know. again. <laughs> I'll uh, come back, just not for you two. Tara, tar, for those that would like to, to, to look into your services, where can they find out more? Oh, thanks. It's uh, www.revdemand.com. Real easy. Just revdemand.com. And I'm Tara at revdemand.com or 770-856-2087. Great. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Mike, did you know that Ferratech... Would you like a little music under this? 
you know, I'll let you decide, Mr. DJ. Ferrotech has been in business for 25 years by manufacturing top-of-the-line toner supplies, and they offer outstanding customer service. Ferrotech offers a 100% guarantee on all Ferrotech products, so you know that they stand behind their quality. For more info, visit ferrotech.com. That's F-A-R-R-A-T-E-C-H.com. And a quick shout-out, thanks to Ferrotech for sponsoring this show. Yep, they are underwriting this show and the Gwinnett Chamber show as well that we do here. So we we love Ferratech and appreciate all their support here at uh, Business Radio X. All right, our next guest, our third and uh, last for this program is Ann Hall with Own Your Idea. And Ann's probably very uh, scared to talk to us after what she's seen so far. But uh, Ann, welcome to the program and thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Own Your Idea is the name of the company. Talk about the, 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 the name of the company itself, where you got the name, and, and what your company does. Okay. Own Your Idea is a consulting company, and our emphasis is specifically on um, research, um, proofreading, writing, and um, editing services. And we also offer administrative business solutions. The way I came up with the name was um, I noticed that a lot of individuals that I worked with, they would have great ideas, but they would never really put them into action. They would never implement them. And so I began to, you know, really try to encourage people, you know, at a minimum, why don't you write your idea down so that if an opportunity ever presents itself for you to launch it or put it into place, you now have something to work with. And I, you know, I felt like that would really help people to just kind of take ownership of their idea. And it's like, you're owning your idea. Um, funny story, I've had, uh, my brother will kill me for telling this story, but uh, I would always laugh at him because he he was convinced that he came up with Skittles and that he wasn't making any money. And I said, well, you know, somebody else got to it before you did. You know, you should have written it down and you should have done something with it. So, so that's how I came up with the concept of own your idea. Do you have a background in, in writing and journalism and that sort of thing? What, kind of what led you to th- like, think, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, you saw that you had a talent in that area and you turned it into a business. I did. My background is corporate communications. Um, I've always worked in a corporate environment. Um, I have a, a degree in journalism and I studied broadcast journalism at Michigan State University, go Spartans. And um, I uh, did that for several years and I you know, wanted to use my gift and my passion. I found that, you know, ideas, I would generate ideas pretty easily for people um, that I wrote well. Um, People would come to me often and ask me to write or rewrite or edit things for them. And so when I decided I wanted to do something on my own, I decided to use that gift and that expertise. And, uh, you know, a lot of times we talk to business owners and they're, they're always talking about working with existing businesses. But I think one of the unique things is you, you right at the top of, about what you do is you want to help entrepreneurs. So you want to help in that birthing stage of a business as well as established business. So talk, um, talk a little bit about your process in working with someone who comes to you and says either, you know, I can't put it down on paper or, or just, you know, help. They start with the word help. So what's your process in working with somebody, both the birthing stage of, a, of an idea and also some of the established businesses? Okay. Well, one of the first things I always try to do is find out what is what is your goal? What is your objective? That's one of the first things I always ask people. A lot of times people really don't know what they want. They may know they want something written, but they don't know exactly what they want written, or they may have something written and it's not really hitting the mark. So I usually always try to find out like what's your objective what's your end goal what really are you trying to accomplish so we go from there so you know let's say for some people it may just be you know they want to come up with a mission statement Um, they may want to come up with a tagline for a business Uh, They may just need to develop a communications plan in general to convey key messages. Um, That's something that's very critical. A lot of times um, companies, and whether you're a small business or a large business, you should have key messages that you're on point with that you can just roll off your tongue. You know, it's almost like that elevator speech. You know, you always need to be prepared to talk about, you know, what your company does, what your messages are, and being able to stand behind it. So a lot of times I will work with people to help them to develop that. Um, That's usually a starting point for me because if if we can kind of figure out what exactly you're trying to do and where you're going, then that can kind of, um, you know, kind of give us the roadmap towards the type of messaging that we need to develop. Um, a client I work with um, now, um, I helped her to develop a mission statement, to develop a brand for her company, um, and she's been very excited. You know, so I get a lot of joy and excitement when I work with someone who has a successful, she was a psychologist, she had a successful business, but she wanted to go to the next level. And and it sounds like most of the time when you start working with someone, it's kind of for a particular project. I need help with a tagline. I need help with my vision statement. 
does that normally lead to other things uh, or wow, that was so good. Ooh, could you help me with this? And then let me ask a other little follow up to all the business owners out there listening. Is there what are some of the areas where you would say as a proofreader, as an editor, as a someone who helps write? boy, really spend some time and pay attention to this written part of your business, whether it's a blog or their website or, you know, where are the areas that business owners really need to pay attention to what they're writing? Um, Well, like I said, I think that, you know, um, having key messages, you know, in the corporate environment, everyone, you know, it's key messages and everything is surrounds the key message, you know, whether it's um, a, a, a PR campaign, it's the key messages. And usually every year they may um, generate new key messages. They may modify, you know, um, it, they'll continue with the same messages. So again, with me, when I work with, with individuals, especially entrepreneurs, really kind of focus on what is the, what is your mission? What is your passion? What is it that you're trying to accomplish? Usually it does lead to other things because I find that people I work with they don't write well or they don't feel they write well and um, so they want me to continue to stay on to help them with different projects Um, projects may go from something as simple as um, you know doing something like helping them to develop a a mission statement to now they want to write blog articles or now they want to write an ebook or they want to write you know they always wanted to write a nonfiction story so you know, I just kind of I'm there to support and guide them in that process and just give them direction and or to write it for them. And I pick up on the term you use key message. Sometimes people want to get all this information crammed in and you probably have to kind of say, listen, sometimes less is more. And, you know, you, you can't we can't get everything in, but we want to get, you know, here's the the key message, I guess, which is, is the word. Um, Ann Hall with Own Your Idea is uh, joining us here on the program. And I love this show because we've got three real good businesses here. That, that, that can help any business out there, really any size, no matter what they uh, do, whatever whether they have a service or a product. But um, I, I'd love to hear maybe your, your most interesting or exciting assignment that you've ever had. Okay. Um, probably the one that I was the most excited about uh, I did last year. I received a phone call from someone. Um, someone was looking, had a book proposed when it needed to be edited. It was written by a medical doctor, and it was community-based, and they needed it turned around within 24 hours. And uh, so I said, OK. Um, and I, you know, I, you know, I, I had an intern that was working with me, but I, said, I think I need to take this project on myself. And so I my initial aspect when someone asked me to edit something is to read it first. Um, it was about 200 pages, but I read it. I read the entire thing, you know, stayed up all night and I read the entire thing because I wanted to kind of have context for it. Um, yeah, you can just start editing something, but I always feel like you want to read through it and have context of what it is that you're reading. Um, and then I, you know, began to make the edits. And when I sent it back to the client, they were very happy and excited that I was able to maintain the tone. And that made me excited that I was able to do that within a 24 hour period time frame. All right. And before we we let you go, I know you want to talk about this uh, Free Your Idea campaign and and a journal that you're working on. Tell us all about that. Okay. yeah, I um, developed a card. I brought one with me. It's called the Idea Day. This is the women's journal. And basically, um, I came up with the concept, um, as I mentioned earlier, when I started talking is um, helping people to really kind of begin to develop their ideas and write them and put them down on paper. Um, you know, and it doesn't have to even be the written journal. I prefer the written journal because that's what I do. Um, but it could be an electronic journal. I try to encourage people. You can talk it onto your your um, your mobile devices. But just begin to just kind of to document your ideas. And um, I'm a person that generate ideas often, and I talk to people that generate ideas often. So the Idea Day Journal was just an opportunity for them to have something that's physical that they could use to write things down. So it's by um, day, it's perpetual, it's not dated, so it's perpetual. Um, so if you wrote something on January 1st, you can go back to you know January 1st on any year and you can go back and look. So it's not like, you know, well, I had to have this done by 2015. Um, and then I also made it more motivational so I found some quotes that I thought that would be very um, encouraging for people. So my thing for um, 2016 is believe in all the possibilities that exist. And so that's really the focus for Free Your Ideas is to help people to basically begin to just release those ideas that are locked up in their head and begin to put them on paper. So, by the way, where can people get that journal? Thank you. <laughs> they can get the journal um, by visiting my website, which is um, www on your idea dot co not com it's dot co or on my blog at on your idea dot info and and so the idea day journal is is something uh, ancillary that you do with the main idea of proofreading editing writing are there any other kind of 
by doing the writing and the editing, are there other things that, that have kind of opened up other services that Own Your Idea can offer to business owners and businesses? Um, well, as I mentioned, I do a lot of administrative business solutions. Um, I work with, I think I mentioned, I work with a child psychologist and I've, I, we've kind of gone from doing some basic communications consulting type work into helping her with some administrative business solutions, helping her to create efficiencies in her office, helping to establish, she was a sole proprietor. And so helping her to establish the efficiencies she needed to begin to grow her business because that's what she um, needed to do. You know, she has a bookkeeper, um, but she didn't have anyone to help her with marketing. She didn't have anyone to help her with, you know, her key messaging. And so it's grown as a result. I was supposed to be there for two months, and now we're on four months, so... (laughs) Helping out. We like those. Uh, Ann Hall, the president of Own Your Idea. You gave the websites. Go ahead and give the websites again and any other contact information you'd like to share. Okay. Um, again, the um, website for the business is ownyouridea.co. And my blog, um, where you can find a lot of useful information, is ownyouridea.info. And I can be reached at ann at ownyouridea.info. And can you help people anywhere? I mean, I know you're based in Decula, but can you help people anywhere in Atlanta? Yes. With my writing and editing um, skills, I can do that virtually. All you have to do is, is email me your document. Once we kind of solidify a contract, you email me, email me your document. I will take care of it for you and email it right back to you. So that's even outside the metro area. Absolutely. Very Gotta good. love technology. Uh, Ann Hall from Own Your Idea here on Gwinnett Business Radio. Big thank you to you. Thank you. I uh, also want to thank uh, Tara Lambelay of uh, Rev Demand. Don't give me that. I didn't give you anything. Okay. And uh, John Ray with Bookkeeping Express and Ray Business Advisors. And also thanks to Gladys, the weekly bookkeeper, a monthly bookkeeper, and Mark the Marketer, who also joined us virtually. And she'll be here on the next show, though. She will, bringing cookies. A reminder that you're enjoying this program from the uh, Subaru of Gwinnett Studios, and you can enjoy this program or any of our other Gwinnett Business Radio programs, although they may not be as funny as today's show. Uh, We were, uh, well, I don't want to say we were good today, but... I guess that's all debatable. Um, By visiting GwinnettBusinessRadioX.com. You can also uh, download any of our shows on iTunes. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook at Gwinnett Radio X. And uh, also you can check out our videos on YouTube at the uh, new Business Radio X Gwinnett Studio um, YouTube channel. You forgot to thank one other guest, Z, our producer. I was getting to it. Oh, sure you were. Thank you, Z. And, and Trey, while we're at it as well. Absolutely. Any parting words, Stephen? I think we've said it all, Mike. I, I think so, too. So for Stephen and everybody else behind the scenes, I'm Mike Salmon. We'll see you next time right here on Gwinnett Business Radio. See you later, Gladys. Gladys.